Now, it has been almost a year uh, since Cyclone Gabriel ripped through New Zealand. It was uh, shocking um, for New Zealanders um, who experienced Cyclone Gabriel at the start of February of last year because even though we knew that there was a cyclone on its way and even though there were red warnings, particularly for the Tairawhiti and Hawke's Bay areas, no one expected really what happened, which was such a deluge uh, that 11 people were actually killed as a consequence of damage caused by Cyclone Gabriel. Hundreds of homes were permanently destroyed or damaged uh, and thousands of uh, folk uh, were displaced uh, and the economy and uh, particularly the livelihoods of orchardists, farmers and a whole series of people involved in the tourism industry uh, were significantly damaged as well. Um, now, I know the media cycle likes to move on on all these sorts of things, but it is worthy of seeing um, that there was a great deal of effort and uh, put into allegedly recovering these devastated regions from their problems. Uh, but very little, I have to say, media follow-up that I've seen certainly this year on whether or not those regions are recovered, have recovered, or whether or not there are still outstanding issues that need to be resolved and whether or not there are decisions for government and for local government to make still uh, that will have an impact upon uh, restoring those regions in particular to a place that is similar or at least adjacent to before Cyclone Gabriel struck. Joining us to talk about this, and, and in the area that was most affected um, is the Mayor of, uh, uh, of the Hastings District Council, and she joins us now, Sandra Hazelhurst. Uh, Your Worship, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, Sandra, one of the things that immediately strikes me about um, this is that the Hastings District Council uh, took in many of the rural parts of Hawke's Bay, I think it takes in all of rural Hawke's Bay in actual fact, you were probably the most devastated region in terms of economic damage. A year on, are you, have you recovered or are there still outstanding issues that need to be resolved? Well, there are many parts to the recovery, and uh, and um, and and we look at roads and bridges, and then we look at the, the moving people into safe parts of the district, and we also look at how our horticulture sector has uh, stood up again and replanting trees, and so it's been it's been a, a massive journey, a massive year, and as we come up to our one year anniversary and and reflect on what's to do. Um, you know, we're grateful for the, the government funding we have, but our silt collection, we've collected 1.4 million uh, square cubic metres of silt, but there's 1.2 million cubic metres still to stand to collect. And what that does is actually get the productive land back into use. So if we collect the rest of our silt, the 1.2 million square cubic metres, then we will uh, be able to get 650 hectares back into productive use. So... Uh, we have spoken with the Prime Minister to discuss the, the remaining silk collection and see if we can get some financial support, extra financial support for that. Uh, but that, that is about our economic recovery and as we're a region, a growing district, our Hastings district, we grow some of the best food in the world and, uh, and we need to get that land back into productive use. But it's been very, very um, heartening to see so many of our, our growers uh, with beautiful fruit on their trees this summer and um, been able to clear that silt from under the trees and get production back. So there are there's other parts. We have 166 families who are going through a voluntary buyout and that's about people moving out of the, the valleys and and moving into uh, a safer place where they can to live more safely away from some of the rivers that impacted them throughout the cyclone. So... The voluntary buy it is going very well. So far, we've got 100 people in negotiations, 100 families, and nine have had this um, agreement and settlements. So in terms of our bridges, we've stood up 10 temporary bridges, and um, but, you know, we've got 13 bridges to completely rebuild, and two are underway with design at the moment, and um, 40 
bridges need repairing. So there, there's a lot to do, and um, we've you know we just keep going, and and this is um, a long journey, and the affordability for us and. Hedi Tonga Hastings, uh, our wider district, is estimated $800 million for us to uh, recover our roads and bridges. So, you so know, that's we, the cost of your infrastructure, Sandra, that you're going to need yes, to... Yes, yeah, that's for our infrastructure. Yeah. Um, mm. Now, obviously, you probably also had damage to stuff under the ground too, did you, like sewage and water? Uh, not so much because most of the impact was on the rural districts and mm. so it wasn't urban sort of stormwater and, and wastewater. So, uh, but, you know, they, largely it's it's the slips and we've repaired 500 slips, but the last remaining 300 slips, all of that is um, under slips, so beneath the road. So they're, they're advanced engineering and design that is underway to clear those slips. But... All of our rural community now has full access, but the roads are still very, very vulnerable, and we've we've got a long way to go. And 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 you know our state highway network is, uh, particularly state highway two Napier to Wairoa is very, very vulnerable still, and a lot of repairs are going on there. Bridge work is still remaining, and a lot, a lot of work to do with rebuilding, uh, retaining walls, etc. So, so yes, there's lots to do. All right. Um, and I'm sure that they've occupied, some, from day one, it's occupied your mind and that of your elected councillors and your senior management team in Hastings uh, yes. on this issue. But when you mention those sorts of statistics, and I'm looking at 800 million, you don't have 800 million, Sandra, in no, Hastings. No, you don't. So no. um, where, where is that money going to come from to restore your infrastructure to the point where you'll be satisfied that you're back to where you should be? So we got $230 million um, from the government and uh, and so the, now we're in talks about how we, uh, how we look at uh, future funding and infrastructure funding for us to, to stand up again. And uh, so that's, that's a conversation we met with uh, the new Minister of Transport the week before Christmas and the Prime Minister the week before that. And to uh, just explain to him the importance of the access from our rural network um, into our port and into processing plants in the city and, and how important that road rebuild is. And so, so you know, this is the, 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 the big work that has to happen now. We'll be putting in our plans as a region. Um, our region is united in our recovery and we have a, re a recovery agency. But in terms of rates, it's just absolutely out of the question and local government needs a, a different funding and financing model anyway. So this is the conversation that we've started now with the new government. Yeah, except it's a lot simpler than that, isn't it? You talk about a new funding model um, and obviously you're a devastated region. You've got a third of the money, I can just do quick calculations, roughly a third of it's come from the government. You've got to find the other two thirds from somewhere else. It can only yes. really come from the taxpayer, can't it? Because if you don't have the ability, then there's just got to be more cash injection from central government. Absolutely, yes, and that and that's you know and you know we we have put in fifty million dollars from our district council towards the voluntary buyout, and the government put in fifty million dollars, and so you know it's just completely with the interest rates as they are and. and construction costs as they are mm. it's just it's, it's absolutely impossible for us to be able to um you know rate our community for the recovery at such an extent to to make sure we get all that work done in the next five to seven years so what have you you're doing a long-term plan at the moment i guess for yes, this we year are. Yes, so we what, are. what sort of rate increase are you looking at for well the 12 months of 24 25 well we're not there yet <laughs> we're certainly not there yet and um so, you know, now we have to look at, you know, and and you know what this is like, Michael, is, is you know, because otherwise you just push stuff out and it doesn't get done. And and so unless you, so it's a fine balance of being able to rate a, a community that is fair and reasonable for everybody and at the same time make sure that you are committing to uh, delivering the infrastructure and the levels of service that our community needs. And so... Uh, we have now our, our team, our water, three waters teams, uh, all of our teams are working very, very hard to say, what is it that we can deliver? So we've been delivering about $120 million of 
our infrastructure a year through our, our, our drinking water program and wastewater program. So we've been doing a lot and it's like, well, okay, so now let's reprioritize what has to be done now and, and what has to be done uh, maybe two and three years down the path. So that's the stuff that we're working through and it is, and it is very, very difficult. Indeed it will be, um, because you'll have so many other pressures from particularly, I guess, the urban parts of Hastings say, well, don't forget about us, we've, both, we've got community needs too. Um, That's right, and, you know, with the earthquake, the changes to the earthquake legislation and rules, you know, um, at, we've got libraries, and we've, had, we've just spent $40 million on earthquake strengthening uh, our theatre and our municipal buildings, and so, you know, there's all of those pressures as well, so... Um, yeah, they're, they're, what are your debt levels like, Sandra? Because I'm I'm thinking that well, must be horrendous. Well, it, it, in February um, will be four hundred million. That's a lot for debt. a small for a small district. Yes, it is. 